Great. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the October 17th, uh, 2022 meeting of the Town of Arlington Redevelopment Board. Uh, this evening, I'd like to start by acknowledging the members of the board who are present, starting with Steve Rebot. Good evening, Madam Chair. Uh, Melissa Tintakos. Present. I'm Rachel Zemberry. Jean Benson. Present. And Kim Lau. How are you doing? All right. And we have uh, Claire Ricker joining us from the uh, Department of Planning and Community Development, as well as Kelly Linema. All right. Uh, so for everyone joining us here in the room, please note that the meeting is being recorded by ACMI. And we will uh, start off by moving right into our first agenda, which is the discussion of potential zoning items, excuse me, zoning amendments to bring to town meeting or special town meeting including a discussion of MBTA communities. And I will kick it off to uh, Claire right. to begin our discussion. All right, so um, we are going to circle back to a document that um, Kelly distributed at our uh, retreat um, two or three weeks ago, right when I first started, um, which is a really great table, um, very, very informative about that really um, condenses and itemizes each of the um, zoning recommendations, suggestions, um, policy change, potential amendments um, that has come out of the recent plans. So what we need to do is, or what the board um, needs to do, is look at these recommendations, um, decide if any um, you'd like to bring forward as a board to town meeting um, so that we can start to um, you know, flush them out and um, put, get some research behind them. And uh, yeah, so essentially that's it. Which which of these amendments we'd like to um, get behind, if any, um, knowing that we will also be dealing with MBTA communities. Um, another document that we have for you this evening is a really rough working schedule for where we would like to go with implementation of MBTA communities. I think this board, we've already sort of discussed in principle and in timing that we'd like to do a special town meeting related to MBTA communities. Um, I think that said, I'm not sure what the appetite of the board is to, you know, really push on some of these, but again, I'd like to hear from you all what the priorities are so that we can get to work on them, get started on it. That sounds um, good. And so I'm not sure what the best way is to kind of go through some of these. You're far more familiar with them than I am. I called out a couple that I thought were interesting, um, including transfer of development rights. I think that's something we could look at um, as a policy recommendation, especially related to MBTA communities um, and implementation. Um, and then as uh, I brought up in our previous meeting, um, explore options to establish a Chapter 40R smart growth overlay. Um, that came out of the housing production plan. Um, that's something I think we could also relate back to MBTA communities overlay. Um, so those are the two that really, I think, immediately um, stuck out to me. I'm also aware that we have our Arlington Heights Neighborhood Action Plan. I'm not sure if we would like to uh, start to implement some of the recommendations of that plan. Um, one of the things I love about that plan is that it's, it recommends to consolidate business districts. I'm wondering if this is a pilot thing we could do for Arlington Heights that, you know, you know, then get some metrics around it and see if it's applicable um, in other places. Um, so I think initially uh, those are the items that I'm um, looking at. Um, and of course, certainly, you know, whatever the board's priorities are, we'd like to discuss as well. Thank you, Claire. Um, and if I could also just read through the list of zoning bylaw modifications that we made um, at the uh, at the retreat of potential zoning bylaw modifications. So these are in, some of them are redundant with the recommendations from the recent plans and some were the result of some of our, um, our discussions um, and our more recent hearings that we, that we thought were necessary. I just want to run through these. Mm -hmm. And then what I think I'd like to do is um, um, have each member of the, the board weigh in on those that might be their priority. Um, and then we'll run through the whole list again and um, identify which we, we think we might want to pursue. It doesn't mean we will pursue, but we want to mm -hmm. put some concerted effort right. into, if that works for everyone. 
Okay, so the list that I have from the um, from the retreat are um, looking at the open space requirements and rear setback, limiting the size of the building based on number of units versus building lot area. Uh, let's see, uh, setback requirements, uh, looking at the setback requirements for um, new construction with multiple frontages. That has been an area where uh, we have found that we need some additional clarification and perhaps some more leniency. Um, clarify the 100% stormwater treatment on site for what storm event and is this even possible? Uh, looking at the uh, the use of self-storage in the industrial zone, whether or not that's something we want to keep in or not. The discrepancy with the FAR definition between the building department and the way that it's written in the zoning bylaws. Um, potentially modifying the FAR limits in the R2 district. Right now it's 0.35, if not a one or two family, which as we have seen, <coughs> does not necessarily make sense. Um, looking at a potential overlay district in <coughs> seven Broadway, this is um, something that we could look at in conjunction with MBTA communities right. or as a standalone. Um, there was the case of the industrial, expanding some of the uses for the industrial um, use area. So looking at whether or not items such as a doggy daycare, other types of uses that have actually come in front of the Department of Planning and Community Development, which makes sense in that area, but are not explicitly stated. Um, I think re-looking at the use table in terms of how explicitly things need to be stated or not. Um, and then we had the 40R district also on our list. So it sounds like that's something that we might want to move forward. The prohibition of one story buildings on Mass Ave which is something that we had talked about um, and also appears several times in the zoning recommendations. And the last item I had is the transfer of oversight of the ARB properties to um, uh, facilities. So that was my initial list. Um, Jean, I will turn it over to you. Thanks. Yeah, I should say um, a couple of things before I give you my list some of which overlaps with what um, Rachel had to say. There are a lot of things on the zoning recommendations that I think we should pursue, but I think we should probably pursue them as part of what we do with MBTA mm -hmm. communities. Mm -hmm. So things like 40R, things like that, I'm not gonna mention, because I think we'll need to have a separate discussion about what to do about MBTA communities. So I'm not doing that. The second thing I'll say is that the um, Connect Arlington plan, the Arling Heights, Arling Heights Neighborhood Action Plan, whatever it is, the um, Net Zero Action Plan and the Fair Housing Action Plan never came to the ARB for input and, we never, and never was approved by us. So I have more concerns about those than I do about the master plan and the housing implementation plan where we had a lot of input um, into that. Um, so that said, let me just, my list is divided into two pieces. One is things that I think we can do at the same time we're working on MBTA communities that I think would not be big lifts. And the second are things that I think we need clarification or correcting mistakes that I found in the zoning body. Um, and I probably didn't find all of them because they keep popping up. Um, so, and some of them were just said, you know, first one, which is something that um, Rachel mentioned that's found in some of the recommendations is no more single story buildings in the B districts on Mass Ave and Broadway. And, and this just says encourage, I would prohibit, but mm -hmm. I think we need to take a look at that seriously. Um, open space in the B districts, again, Mass Ave and Broadway. This is mentioned in the housing production plan. And I think an interesting thing for us to think about that is to give us some leeway in, in our design review so that they can put the open space 
in front to allow a more active streetscape, put in tables, things like that. If you look at most of the sidewalks and the business districts, they're pretty narrow. You can't, you know, we have people with tables in the streets, things like that. If we can start figuring out how to do that or make that as an option, I think we have the ability as buildings get built to create a better frontage with some more room. Um, mentioned in here, parking and front setbacks, which is mostly a, a residential thing. As I walk through my neighborhood, even though there are garages and long driveways, there are always cars parked in the front setback. So it seems that it doesn't make a lot of sense to me that we prohibit it when really it happens on a pretty regular basis. So I think we need to think about, about that. Um, mentioned was um, what to do about inclusionary zoning and a feasibility study. We actually, we meaning either this board or planning, made a commitment two or three years ago to town meeting when we asked them not to vote, to vote for an increase in the percentage that we would get a study done to see if 15% was the right percentage. And we never got the study done. So I think that would be helpful. And I would combine it with looking at density bonuses, which are also mentioned in here, so we can potentially combine them. I, as um, Rachel mentioned, I think we should take a look at removing the self-storage facilities as a use in the industrial district. Now that we've gotten a second one there, we may have enough um, and maybe time to take that out. And it was only put in when we, we, when we did the industrial districts two or three years ago, you know, and there are a lot of changes made and maybe that's served its purpose. Um, environmental design review. I had this conversation with some people on the um, um, climate group. Should we put a criterion for climate in environmental design review, which we do not have now? Something that deals with both um, uh, mitigation and adaptation. Um, and is it pro I mean, all the EDR criteria are pretty vague anyhow, so it's probably easier to write a vague one having to do with um, climate adaptation and mitigation for us to take a look at when facilities come to <coughs> us for um, EDR review. Similarly, something that bubbled up in the um, zoning bylaw working group but never made it to this board was something where we would allow additional height for buildings that are getting built or rehabbed in the flood zones, 100-year floodplain, so that they can be higher, so there's some freeboard above what we expect uh, the waters to be. So that's another thing I think we should look at. Um, now, things that need to be changed for clarification. Um, and you all can look at this later, but you know, there was that interesting discussion at town meeting a couple of years ago about what residents would be allowed in the I zone. And it clarified in one part, but in 5.6.4H, it seems to be much broader than the narrow one. I'd say we probably want to amend 5 to 6, 4, H to indicate that it's artist mixed use and not other sorts of mixed use. Um, if the AG's office approves the solar roof bylaw, we should probably amend 5.6.2 D1 and 7 in the industrial zone, which was written ahead of time, which doesn't quite contemplate the same use as roofs. So if that's approved, I think we should fix that. Um, then the stormwater, which Rachel just mentioned that we had that one problem with already where it says, retain and treat 100% of the stormwater on site. Are you retaining it? Are you treating it? Which one are you doing? And then 
how could you retain 100% of storm roof? What size storm? So we really need, I think, some help with maybe, you know, David Morgan or somebody like that to think through what's a reasonable size storm that we can expect to be retained on site. So we fix that. Um, in March of 2021, uh, the AG's office in um, approving bylaw changes made indicated that a sentence that is in the bylaw that was adopted by town meeting is inconsistent with state law, but it's in the bylaw without any indication that it doesn't belong there. That section 3.1B, the last sentence says, no such permit shall be issued until the building inspector finds that the applicant is in compliance with the applicable provisions of Title VI, Article Seven of the town bylaw. And the AG said that cannot be applied to authorize the withholding of a building permit for failure to comply with the general bylaw requirements in Title VI, Article Seven, because the building permits have to flow from whether they meet the standards of the zoning bylaw and the building requirements. So this sentence either needs to be removed from this, or we need a footnote that says it's not enforceable. I think it should be removed because they shouldn't be there if the AG said they can't be there. But I leave that to wiser heads to figure out which one of the two to do. Section 5.3.21. I now have to find. I'm sorry, can you repeat that? 5.3.21. Thank you. Number two in parentheses, D, as in dog, references a section zero. That's just a typo or it was a holding place that never got done. I believe that section zero, and somebody should check me on this, should really be section 5.5.2a. So that's just a correction that needs to be made. Um, so that's what I've got. That's great. <laughs> Thanks, Gene. Yeah. Much appreciated. Uh, Ken. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Yes. Um, well, I think, we gonna to I think I'm going to capture everybody's thoughts and then we'll go through the prioritization exercise if that, okay. if that works. Yeah. I mean, I just feel like, Jean, I heard a lot. And so I was wondering if there's a way to group it a little bit, um, even like between corrections and some of the more initiative yep. things. Yeah, that's what I tried to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. like you did fit them in that group, but then what flows to the top? Right. Still right. For him. And then I guess we go through those. Sure. Um, I think clarifications wise, those are, I'm just going to keep yeah. as, a, as a group, but yes, I think those that I'm putting under larger efforts, we should absolutely revisit okay. those. That's a good call out. Ken, your thoughts? Yeah, I took the same approach that Melissa did. And said, "Look, I took all. I looked at all the stuff. It was yep. really, really long, <laughs> and really thoughtful. Okay, but I would like to organize it into different groups. Okay, and like maybe one group. I think Gina's analyst is correct. It's clarifications and corrections and, and changes. Yes, that's just one group. Another group is MBTA, and, and that itself, its heading has all these different uh, changes to it. Yeah, on all the." Uh, all the different zoning, open space, uh, height, density, everything that goes with that. But that's one section. And then the other section maybe is industrial. How do we talk about, do we want to support that? How do we support that? How do the changes we do for that? And then the other one is um, mixed use. How do, how do we, you know, how do we uh, enforce that or, or encourage that or whatever? And then how that applies to different areas. Um, uh, as an overlay, uh, or not an, as an overlay, but I think a lot of these things here, if you all grouped into like five groupings or four groupings, 
And I'm not sure which, you know, what the groupings are quite yet, but if we can just get them grouped in sort of sections and then prioritize it and say, okay, we're gonna work on this one for now, and work on this one, you know, the clarification ones, I think we just keep that rolling. <clears throat> yep. If we wanna focus on the MBTA, because there's a lot of money involved in that, let's focus on that as the first one. And then if we as a board agree to what's the next thing we uh, uh, wanna investigate? You know, or what the rest of the town wants uh, to look at. I mean, I think one of them could be just playing residential housing. Mm -hmm. You know, yep. you see the single family, two family, three family, all that group of there. You know, like she said, do we have parking in front of those areas? Do we have no parking? Where do you put the garage? All these different things, but it all should be that one group that we should look at as a totality, not, you know, this one little line, because then you sort of lose track of everything. So that's, that's how fair. I sort of took it. And I figured maybe today we can sort of fit, sit down and figure out what one of those four or five headings that we can sort of group things in. And then prioritize either by heading or items within each heading. Okay. A suggestion, that's my suggestion, yes. Yeah, that's fine. Great. Melissa. Um, so maybe just, Rachel, if you could give me a little clarification. Um, yeah. We were talking about the, um, having a special town meeting for yes. MBTA. So what was the thinking behind that again, that any zone related to MBTA communities would come to special town meeting? Yes, the thought was that to have a comprehensive process by which we um, review and prioritize and hold hearings and education for Kelly has the process. Yeah, why don't, why don't we actually go through the process? Because I think that'll help clarify. Yeah, when we look at the calendar, there will not be the time to do what we need to do, most for likely for May, uh, April, sure May. Yeah, no, I have a question. Um, but that if we look towards September, there, there may be enough time. And you may have um, Claire and Kelly updated that even since and we're looking towards october okay um so the thought was that we needed to have enough time to run through this full process um and still leave enough time on the back end for all the approvals that need to happen prior to january 1 2024. kelly yeah i mean so this is um you know we've had Number four, the community reach out to us about the timeline. We've also talked with different different staff in town hall, and um, it seems like what we're hearing from the community is is just a request to allow enough time and meetings for people to really discuss MBT communities. Um, so what this schedule does is that really starting now, we could schedule a meeting, just a broader meeting with the met with this we've shared with the select board we've shared with you and update on MBTA communities but we really haven't done a public event to kind of educate and inform people about what is the legislation what does this mean for Arlington to the update the guidelines um, we also the, the application period for technical assistance just opened today so we're applying for technical assistance from MHP I don't know if we are selected for technical assistance I don't know at what time we would have a technical consultant on board but that consultant would really be on board to draft the zoning or draft a zoning overlay um, and to do like the technical aspects of it, we would still need to do, um, and working with a working group and the ARB and everyone could really do the substantive work on outreach and engagement. So after just preparation and start off and just kind of raising some awareness with the community, we would move into, we're proposing to move into like a, just kind of like an education and outreach. So it's more of like an open-ended conversation just to hear from like when, when you think about multifamily, when you think about the, the regulations in the MBTA community zoning, what what does this mean for you? Where would you where do you feel like it's most appropriate for Arlington? What is what does that look like? Uh, we could also at that time incorporate, take a look at some of the other zoning recommendations that are on that spreadsheet and say which one of these would work and is there a way that we can accomplish more with MBTA communities than just doing the bare minimum and meeting the state guidelines? Can we also meet some of the recommendations of the master plan are there ways that we can advance some of the some of those the zoning recommendations that were part of the master plan is there ways that we can also kind of tie in economic development and commercial revitalization as part of this 
Um, at that point, I would anticipate that we would be able to get a consultant in and we'd have some existing conditions, we'd have some analysis of what's our zoning conditions on the ground, we'd have our model finalized, we'd be able to like have like a have a baseline that we can start with. Um, and then bring that to the community in March with sort of an existing conditions and report out on the engagement. Um, so we can share what we've heard. Uh, this would be a second public meeting as well. So there's like a report out that would come from the working group and then a public meeting where we share that. Um, we go into that point is kind of more internal work session. So the, the consultant at that point would really kind of take those recommendations and then come like develop three, four scenarios that we would then bring back to the community and say, okay, this is what we heard you say. Here's the trade-offs, like here's this scenario, this accomplishes X, Y, and Z. Here's scenario two, this is how it's different, and this is what it achieves. Because there's, especially because we have been sort of untethered from Alewife, it creates almost like an infinite number mm -hmm. of opportunities for how this could look. So I think that's where engagement is actually even more important because we're not limited to a specific area. In May, definitely, uh, probably late May, so definitely before school, let's out for the summer, we'd be coming back with, um, to the consultants, we'd be coming back to the working group with three or so, three or more scenarios for compliance, and then at the end of May or very early June, bringing those to the public in a public meeting. Um, and then it's a whole other round of feedback where we, you know, we need to hear back from the community, we do more surveys, we do maybe some focus groups, we meet with some committees. Um, to find out what, what scenarios work for you, which of these things, or what did we miss, what needs to be adjusted. Usually what happens in iterative processes is that people want to match two different things together. Um, and so maybe that's what happens. Um, and so that starts a summer of kind of iterating, uh, listening and revising. So that would go through August. Um, then presenting, getting, Getting that together, working with the consultant to get a final recommendation for a zoning amendment. So then we have, then we enter the town meeting process where we need to have hearings in front of the ARB. We need to figure out what our main motion is. We need to have the um, discussions with town meeting members and maybe attending some precinct meetings. Um, getting that warrant article and main motion together. And, and again, this doesn't necessarily have like the specific exact timeline that it would have to be in because I don't know what that date would be for special town meeting, so I have to graph date it according to the attorney general's schedule. But the idea is that if we would be able to bring this to a special town meeting at the end, at the middle of October or the end of October, we would then have that to the attorney general in time to still participate in the fossil fuel bail pilot program because the deadline for that would be in February of 2020. Um, and the other thing that this, this it's it maybe a little bit of a protracted schedule, but the other thing it does allow us is to do plenty of, it allows plenty of time for visualizations uh, and creation of like a lot of the graphics work that would need to be done in order to really show people what these changes would look like on the ground. Because I don't, I think we're, we're sort of, um, we're operating at a disadvantage where we can't show what technical <laughs> words mean in a physical, in a physical realm. But I think this, again, this is totally a working draft for discussion. There was nothing mm -hmm. concrete here. Um, looking for your feedback and whether you think this is, this. first of all, if this kind of more protracted timeline seems more feasible, um, and any and if so, if there's anything that you would change about this, um, or if you really think we should be advancing this to town meeting in April, in which case um, this gets like shrunk in half. Thank you, Kelly, because I think um, part of when I'm looking at our zoning and policy recommendations, um, my sense is that there is um, kind of a lot of pieces that can be incorporated into um, this concept of accomplishing more than just the MBTA bench line. And it seems to me that that can come in kind of different forms so like the mechanics of it are interesting to me so that it's not just an overlay that might meet the you know maybe the basic requirements but maybe that we work together and do the harder work for a new zoning district that is maybe form-based code that brings in the housing and the mixed-use pieces 
but with the design component that you're mentioning and the visualization. And so I guess my thinking is it could incorporate a lot of pieces of the recommendations that I see in here, um, including the 40R that you mentioned, yeah. Claire. Um, That's key. And I think, you know, with the 40R, I mean, obviously, fit housing production, net zero, connect Arlington, and so a lot of them, not all of them connect that way. That's mm -hmm. why if um, you're asking me kind of my thinking on some mm -hmm. of those, the 40R kind of syncs up and it seems to align with Claire recommended to, to kind of think about. Mm -hmm. um, but I like to think of how we kind of to maybe, you know, fit it in into the context of the MBTA communities. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, I, I understand the value of the corrections and the clarifications, um, and that's an important role too. But if we were as a board to really kind of throw our energy around something like this meaningful change, I would like us to really consider, you know, thinking of something older, um, a new zoning district, more based code, 40R, and really making that meet the MBTA communities in a, in a stronger way. Great. Thank you, Melissa. Steve. So my uh, I'll start with sort of like a process question or suggestion. Traditionally, the ARB and the select board have been fairly independent bodies. Mm -hmm. right. And for permitting, I think <coughs> for policy, I look in terms of setting policy, I personally would not mind working more with the select board. Um, I think they could offer a good set of expertise and, you know, to the extent that, um, you know, they agree with it we can agree on a direction, I think we have a better chance of achieving it. Um, I can just give a little context there. Sure. Um, the select board has in the past chosen not to mm -hmm. weigh in and take a position mm -hmm. on a lot of the um, zoning bylaw amendments mm -hmm. and work of the ARB. It doesn't mean that they never will, mm -hmm. but um, we certainly can, can work towards that Again, right. I, I would like to at least offer them the opportunity to, sure. you know, to, even if we just get together and say, hey, hey, this is what we're thinking of doing. What do you, what, what's your opinion? What are your concerns? Sure. Um, for the MBTA districts, I think it's going to, I think their involvement will be, will be important. Um, just, you know, because they are one of the main political bodies in town. Um, and, you know, buy in. You know, the broad, the broader, the broader you can, the broader the buy-in you can get. I think the better chance that we have of succeeding. Um, now, corrections. I think I've, I'm familiar with several that Mr. Benson mentioned, and I think it would be really nice to get them fixed. <laughs> so uh, we'll stop. Uh, I won't dwell on that. The um, looking through the, um, you know, looking going through the spreadsheet. I think there are a number of pieces here that could be used in the implementation mm -hmm. of an MBTA community of, uh, of an MBTA community district, yeah. and I'd like to just sort of hold on them for now, which yeah. is to say, don't do them this spring. Um, save it for save it for the big effort. Right. Um, but in terms of things that could be, you know, that we might consider for the the spring. Um, I do like the idea of you know, considering a um, you know a height minimums in the business districts, so no more one-story buildings, as well as possibly some of the district consolidation that was recommended by the Arlington Heights Neighborhood Action Plan. Not necessarily getting into the whole plan to the plan unit development part of it, but for the you know the the street blocks that face Mass Ave. Um, you know, it, it's a patchwork quilt right now, and that you know, it doesn't need to be, and it probably it, it probably would be better if it wasn't. Great. I have um, yes one comment to make um, about one of the things we talked. First of all, actually, I I had this so set in my mind and organized. We're going to talk about this, and then we're going to talk about this. But you're right; it's all related. So I think. The one comment that I want to make about the schedule, and I, I, I understand it's a little bit extended, is that I do think we need the time to coalition build. 
um, mm -hmm. and to um, you know really get people on board with this, especially if we're going to do different pieces that are not just a density, for example, overlay, and then, and then mm -hmm. here's what we're going to do if we were actually going to do um, you know some consolidation and really, you know kind of a far more comprehensive and thoughtful overlay than just here's what we have to do to get MassWorks funding in the future. Um, I think it's going to be, um, we're going to need a lot of time to, to let people know what we're doing. And I think, you know, at the retreat, you said we're going to need good graphics. I think we're going to need time to develop something like that. So we're not just talking about design and architecture. Um, and so this is really why we've looked at this at this sort of longer schedule. And I think, you know, hearing Mr. Melissa's comments and Gene as well, if we are going to include something like 40R, 40R right now is 20% um, minimum inclusionary units. Our zoning bylaw says 15. That's something we have to look at. You know, for example, um, you know, how do we best put these things together? It will take longer, I think, than you know, four four winter months or three winter months. I do think we need that time. Um, the other comment that I wanted to make <laughs> was Rachel to your last, your the last uh, item on your list. Mm -hmm. um, all we need to do is a warrant article that suggests that redevelopment board will transfer property to the city. Uh, excuse me, the town. The, the facilities we don't want to do that. We don't want to. No. 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 Okay. It's the administration. <laughs> the administration. The maintenance. The maintenance. Right. The maintenance. Okay. Yes. Okay. Well, as far as Okay, I don't want to. No, go for it. As far as uh, appropriateness of renters and what what the use of the buildings are, and like that, I think we still want to retain uh, oversight in that. Okay, all right. All right. Uh, so we won't put that on. No, it, it's just it's just that, you know we're not set up to do housekeeping and uh, maintenance or or heat or any of that kind of stuff. Uh, which then falls to your department, which is and, not the appropriate place. And Jenny used to <laughs> do that, and I, yeah, I, I bless her heart for doing that. But it's something you're not set up to do. Let's get the facilities department. Let's get the DPW, you, you know, snow shoveling yeah. and all that kind of stuff. I'm, I'm wondering, Kelly, and maybe you can make a note. Um, in my conversation with Sandy, he was very clear. He said, "Well, we need to transfer these properties in order for that to happen." But I don't. Maybe that's not the case. I think we have to do some more research. All right. Sorry, I was a little premature okay. on that one. Can, can I mention a couple things about? Please go ahead. I, I think the timing makes a lot of sense. Okay. I don't think we can get it done in a good way in time for spring town meeting. Um, I think generally the, the sort of steps make sense. I do have a few questions. I mean, there are some consultants who are really great. At, here's how zoning can change, and here's what it would look like. And there are other consultants that are really great at community process. And I'm not clear, and they don't always go together. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm not clear which ones we're getting, but it'd be nice to get both, not simply, you know, ones that are gonna do, you know, help you figure out what the three zoning scenarios are and what they would look like, but, and, and there are groups that do this that can help us do a really robust community process. So that's, that's one um, additional thought I have about this. The, the other is, the, the last time I looked, we still had an action plan due to DHCD on January 31, but it wasn't clear to me, and maybe I didn't find it, what goes into that action plan and how do, we, and it's not, uh, that's not here, and I think it should probably yeah. be added. So, what goes into it, and what's the process that gets us there, and what's the ARBs? I mean, you're going to do it, but yep. is what's it this, our or process? is it something more robust? Than yeah, this? no, yeah. it is. It is. Yeah. It's saying it's, what we're going to right. do and the yeah. timeline by which we intend to do it. So it's it's basically submitting a form to DHCD, kind of laying out your schedule and by when you anticipate. Okay, so it'll be helpful just going so up. It's this with right. to get, a more get that in nice there. That's good. What's the date is that yeah. it's going to be due. And, and I think, you know, and I think this is a big process that will and should take a lot of time and, and resources to, to make work well. 
and to have a good outcome. But I, I do think we can do more than simply the clarifications and the corrections for town meeting in the spring. Maybe, and clearly not everything, but things like the no single story, you know, deciding what to do with the self-storage facilities in the I zones, maybe some other uses we want to add to the I zones. So I do think we can have a subset of things that we think we can do leading up to town meeting in April that will not create too much problem with rolling out this plan for October. That's my thought. So that might be our best next step, actually, is to is to start going through what those might be so that we can identify those as discrete yep. scopes um, to focus on. So um, I completely agree with you, Jean. I, I think that we should parse out what belongs under the bucket of MBTA communities. It may not end up in the, you know, at the end of the wash, that it is it that it belongs there, and it's something that you know we could always revisit if it doesn't make it into the MBTA communities piece. But if there are, I agree with Jean. I think that there are other items um, that make sense for us to approach for springtime meeting. We should we should go ahead and pull those out and and do that. Uh, I'd love to use this time to figure out what those are and which goes into the MBTA communities bucket, knowing that the clarifications list we will move forward with because those are fairly light left. So maybe what I could do, I think I have everything written down. <laughs> I will go through just what's in the clarifications. If somebody thinks that there is something in here that is actually bigger or belongs somewhere else, just call out while I review these. So the first is the um, clarification about artist, artist mixed use other than, uh, rather than other residential um, aligning with the solar bylaw if approved by the Attorney General, the stormwater retainage and treatment on site um, that we ran into, the um, 3.1B provision that you identified, Gene, is in conflict with um, the, AG's the, the AG's letter, and uh, the citation reference that referenced section zero, which had another yeah. section. So those are the clarification items that I had on the list. Did you include the um, zoning interpretation between us and? Uh, I can add that into the uh, clarification. Mm -hmm. I think that's, list. that's, that's really just a clarification. Clear. Yep. Let if, me, if we're um, interpreting one way and they're interpreting another way, it just yep. makes more, all that more confusion. I yeah, agree. We should deal with that. I just wanted to make sure that it was in the clarification. We've never seen that. I've never seen what the difference is between the zoning bylaw that, and how we interpret it and how they interpret it. So well, we'll need to work with to see that. Inspector Champa right. on that. Right. Okay. So that's what I have under clarifications. And then I have a couple of different buckets. So we have um, general uses. And again, there were some broad items that we identified in the industrial zone. Um, under Residential housing, the list I have included um, parking and front setbacks, removing that uh, requirement. Um, the FAR limits in the R2 district, given that 0.35 did not seem to make sense for us, to us. And studying inclusionary zoning percentage with density bonuses, which I'm actually going to move, I think, into the MBTA communities. Section. I think you can share them both. I mean, because if one applies to uh, that area, might not apply to the MBTA that we're looking at the same thing. Okay, I can keep it in both. I think the FAR is yep. definitely goes into MBTA communities. And then also, Any, like is the, there anyone who doesn't think that the FAR limits in R2 belongs in MBTA communities? Okay, I'm just trying to make no, no. progress. We don't have to revisit. Uh, you also have the single family zoning, right, in there? I do not. Uh, that is we, not something I personally would like to go back to this year. No, but we 
Okay, I just want to put it to say that last year we said we were going to talk about it and more and make it more broader because we didn't have a chance to look at that and, and yes. have all the open meetings. If we want to push that back later on, I'm okay with that. I don't, I personally, want, I don't think that with everything else we have on the list, that's something that I would like to pursue this year, but I'm open to other people's thoughts. No, I, I think we have, um, because there, we're on a dead, we're on a deadline with the MBTA communities, and that is that will be a major effort. Um, I I concur with Rachel. I think deferring uh, deferring the discussion of the single families. Oh, I have no problem deferring. I just want to put it on the list. Oh, okay. As, I'll as put it on the 2024 group. list. You know, so yeah. it's because I mean, yeah, four or five groups. We're not going to do all four or five groups. We're going to probably do one or two. Okay. Right. Sure. So I I just don't want to lose that. Understood. It's, it's you know. Okay. Thank you. Absolutely. Um, let's see. So under business districts, we discussed an overlay district between on Mass Ave and Broadway, which I'll put, sh I think, into MBTA communities. Um, density in terms of a, excuse me, height minimums. So prohibiting one story buildings on Mass Ave, I, I would keep in the business districts section that could be done independently. And then consolidating the Arlington Heights business districts without a, a PUD, I think that could be done either standalone or as part of MBTA communities, probably easier as a standalone since it's a discrete district and there still may be an overlay um, in, in general. Uh, so I'd keep that in the business district section. I keep it business. Yeah. Right now, the MBTA is... I think we should focus on just pure housing. It, MBT doesn't have mixed use. It doesn't have business. If I, am I am I interpreting it, it correctly? No, it, can, it doesn't have to have mixed use, but it can include. I, I don't think that's right. We can't require. We it. cannot require it. Okay, that's. You could not require it, but you could say it, if you provide ground floor commercial, you could do. You could have some kind of bonus, yeah, right? Like okay, because yes. I thought it was, it was pure like three family triple deckers or. Quads or you know just it, it could look a whole lot of different ways. But okay, you, you cannot require commercial. I'm, I mean, this is a discussion to have in lots of places. Right. Here, yeah. Which is, to what extent do we want to use the business districts for MBTA community housing, or to what extent do we want to reserve them for commercial and move the housing to the R districts? And that's, I I don't want to sort of prejudge that one way or the other, but I think that's a conversation that needs to get had along the way. Yeah. Okay. Are you saying that we maybe put in both for now? Well, we're having MBTA is one group, and I don't want to necessarily put commercial space solely in MBTA. I, want, oh, right. I, I, still, I, I still want it in another group, which is the business district. And if that, you know, if we can fit it and work somehow in the MBTA, fine. But if it's if it doesn't lend well there, then we just put it right into the, depending on how the direction we go, like you said, it may, it may move it into the residential areas. And we don't touch the uh, uh, Mass Ave and Broadway and keep that to business district. So let's keep that in that category. But if you, these things could fall within the, in two groups, maybe. And just leave our options open. Or am I interpreting well, this correctly? And you're, you're thinking differently, Rachel. I'll put it on our list. What we do need to identify is what we are going to commit to moving forward with pursuing for spring town meeting. So you can't really have it both ways. You can, you can, we either need to decide to pursue it for spring town meeting or say it belongs in the MBTA communities list. And it may or may not end up in that. And if it doesn't, we pursue it in 2024. Okay, I see. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Um, so, so where are we putting it? We're going to put it in BTA. If it fits in, it fits in. If it doesn't, we're going to slide back over to the business district. <laughs> you know? I'd like to. Think That's that what I heard, right? Yeah. That's what I thought. I don't know. Um, I, I, I would like us to try to do something with the business districts for the town meeting 
I would too. So this is the list of the business district items that I have. Let's prioritize these. Okay. okay? That would maybe go. <laughs> Let's do that. Okay. So we have height minimums prohibiting one-story buildings on Mass Ave, consolidating the Arlington Heights business districts, reviewing the open space in uh, the, the business districts, those requirements, which we've discussed, we feel is prohibitive to development. Uh, the setback requirements with multiple frontages. Uh, and I think this one is in alignment, the open space requirements, yes, that's in alignment with the other one up here. When you say setback, is it setback or step back? Step back. Step back. Yes. So, let's prioritize. So, can I ask you? Please. So, um, I guess with all those things, could that not be accomplished in a new zoning district? The creation Which, of a new zoning district as a um, again as a mechanism as opposed to tweaking individual and deciding which business district is eating up the next business district with additional tweaks to that business district. Is so the there a reason to think that we should work harder for a new zoning district? We could do that through prioritizing the consolidation of the Arlington Heights business district. Um, we talked about doing that as a pilot and at the same time I think we could approach it two ways we could either look at consolidating the Arlington Heights business district as a pilot or we could do that as well as rectifying challenges that we see in the other district districts as a two as a parallel path piece or we could again leave the items that we know are challenging which is a hard thing to knowingly do <laughs> you know um in the other business districts while we pursue the consolidation of the heights business districts oh. um. I think it's just a lot more work to create new business districts, which I don't think we should be doing while we're trying to do MBTA communities. I think it's less work to just say, okay, let's change the open space requirements or the step back requirements. Because once we create a new, want to create a new zoning district, there's a lot more public notice and individual notice to each one of the landowners. And, and then we don't want to confuse the right. two between the, right. what's right. affected by the MBTA, MBTA communities right. and what's so affected I'm, by this I'm, change. I'm, I'm just concerned about doing, it's fair. you know, a, a rethinking of the zoning district at the same time we're moving toward the MBTA communities. Then could I ask staff, how are you reconciling um, an approach that would include mixed use then? Like if there was a business district, would we consider housing in that business district? And then with the density bonus or whatnot, then is that a revisit again with the MBTA communities? So what you're saying is if we did business district consolidation to either allow or disallow residential, whatever, then we would have to look at it again when we do MBTA well, the business districts can have residential as long as they're mixed use, so that's there right now. I mean, if, if we're doing the underlying zoning one way, and then, we, and then we undo it or do a bonus with an overlay on top of it, I'm not I'm not really sure why we go through the exercise of changing the underlying mm -hmm. zoning, mm -hmm. um, unless, you know, because they, you can always opt into the underlying zoning, it makes sense for someone to do that. If we anticipate, you know, we expect someone to do that. Well, is that to your point about a whole new zoning district that makes sense? I think, I mean, that's that would be great. I, I would, I would love it <laughs> if we could do that. Um, I'm just not. I, I think I, I, I'm a little worried about that. 
you know, I'm a little, I'm a little worried about um, doing something like that. But I do think, you know, we could. You know, certainly if that's the campaign, if that's what the board um, wants us to pursue, we could, we could absolutely um, do that. I'm thinking overly now, you know, for a while, I, and then potentially revisit. But if there are changes that need to be made to the ongoing zoning because it's not working, well, that I mean, that's not an answer, that, right? No, no, my, <laughs> I'm sorry. I, that, that's part of our discussion because yeah. that's why we're making these adjustments on a regular annual basis. Mm -hmm. Right? Is the underlining hasn't worked, so there's always tinkering of that. Right. And then if the intention is the overlay, why would we keep baselining we... it with some under that isn't working? Right. right. That people can then default to. Well, we may we may not do an overlay on Mass Ave or Broadway. The overlay may. Be intentionally exclude those because we don't want them in the commercial districts. True, true, but we haven't vetted that out. No, we haven't. We haven't. Right. And we won't know that until after spring right, time. Right, right. And so I, I'm, I'm not to like say, hey, let's just not do anything with spring. But to, I mean, I think you can also use it. <coughs> My sense is you can also telegraph a message to the community as a board if the intention is really to focus on the MBTA and really do something that is uh, meaningful to the zoning as opposed to tinkering. A message could be that we are not doing anything that is tinkering and we are making you know, basic corrections adjustments, kind of as we've talked about. And our thrust is our, it's our communication to the community is to really everyone get involved because this is where we want to focus because yep. otherwise we're bringing some pieces again <coughs> and I feel like the conversations then devolve they get kind of small and we miss the bigger picture uh, as a conversation sure I think the only challenge with that is that sometimes historically it has seen that when there is too big of a change at one time, then nothing happens. Nothing gets approved and nothing goes forward. So in order to ensure that this moves forward, are there steps that we can take so that when we vet all of this out, if it's determined that it's a discrete exercise or a broad, we still have unlocked some of the potential that currently is locked by the zoning by law. I can see it both ways. Yeah, I can right? see it both ways. I mean, that's the uncertainty or the gamble right. on right. either way. Right. right. So my personal preference would be to pick a few things that, again, we use to unlock the potential of some of these sites mm -hmm. so that we um, are able to encourage development um, in whatever way that we can, not knowing where MBTA communities is going to vet out, and then through that process identify how broad, because I, I completely agree with you, I would love for this to really be broad in, in scope and to um, unhandcuff a lot of the things that we're saddled with. But I just don't know. Again, we'll find out through our public meeting process how much appetite there is for that, mm -hmm. I think. I agree with What are your thoughts? I agree with Rachel. I think um, taking get gradual steps that's incremental, uh, that involves the public, mm -hmm. is more, would be well more received than just saying, this is the new thing. I think that would be harder to progress. And uh, I think going the way we're doing it, involving it, is the way to go. I think we have to do more public meetings here and split the public meetings into the areas that are actually affect it. So if your area is affected, let's talk to them directly and answer all their questions. And then open up to the open up the rest of the town so everybody else knows what we're doing. So it's, it's going to have to be two, because you can't, I think if you get, have one meeting, you're not going to get all the answers, and you're not going to get all the questions. And then on here, I like this whole setup, but I don't see the A or B anywhere here taking the lead on anything. 
I'm just worried that in the past, we, a bunch of changes were done and recommendations were done, and they would give it to us at the end, and we review it. And we don't. Like it. We we had we had no. Well, I'm not gonna say that, okay? But but we had no we had no review process along the way, or we had no input on how things sort of developed. And I like to have more of a input in that and say, hey, you know, so we, so maybe we add some more, you know, I don't know, dots, closed dots, open dots or whatever. I agree, Ken. I think that that's a really important point. And, and I have to say, having been a part of several joint select board ARB meetings, um, as well-intentioned as they have been, they have accomplished very little. And I think that we need a few meetings where we accomplish quite a bit during this process. Uh, if I could just also Please. add, I know at the retreat, at least three of you had indicated right. that you wanted to work directly on this. So the idea is that at least three of you would be on that working group. <laughs> I, I, I mean, so, but I, I do take the point that this needs to show more like direct and or yeah. working sessions for mm -hmm. the year. Like this kind of thing here, we, we're not hamstring by reviewing projects or reviewing other yeah. things and we this meeting here is just to talk about that mm -hmm. is good would, would the board be interested in potentially regular update meetings from a working group so, so what, i mean i think more on? communication sure. is sure. preferred yeah. in, yeah. in this Absolutely. Yeah. I think and is. education too i mean i think a lot of that will wind up being yes. but, <coughs> education not only for the board but for the people who attend the board meeting. The three people that's going to be on that, it's going to be going to majority be here already, you know, so it's, <laughs> you know, I know where you're needed, <laughs> but, you know, so I think the board would be pretty well informed just because, you know, there are at least three people sure. are four, right, Steve? No, I, I agree. <laughs> having, um, for our three of us, then having, you know, dedicating a portion of meetings, new business or whatever, to recapping, you know, what's, sure. what's been done. I, I think is, is, a, is a very logical approach. Right. Okay. So I think that clarifies some of the, um, what we'd like to see in the project timeline and what we think we'd like to see as part of the MBTA communities. Um, the two area, the three areas that we think still need to prioritize in terms of industrial, business districts, and residential housing, what we will plan to pursue for April town meeting. Um, we could dive into the industrial uses, um, or we could leave that for this year the business districts, again, I think the, um, I personally would, would still like to move a few of these items forward, not knowing, again, what the scope of the MBTA community's piece will, will be. I, I think that the um, open space requirements, the um, height minimums, and, and I, I really like to look at the Arlington Heights business districts. It's, um, I'm not sure how the rest of the board feels, but that's been on our to-do list for quite some time. Um, personally, I'd, I'd like to prioritize, prioritize that over some of these residential housing items, which may be actually captured under MBTA communities. But I'm curious to hear what other people would like to prioritize. What is MBTA? Oh yes, that's a given, okay. right? And we have a whole list there. The business and, and the clarifications. And I think that's all I think that's all we could do, the three. And then because otherwise you you can try to squeeze too much in to you know, just just a timeline that this is really good the way it's spread out so long. So so, so we get involved enough to try to squeeze something in here. The only thing I might add is the industrial districts for two reasons. One is to decide what to do about the self-storage facilities. And then if um, the planning department's been approached for various sorts of uses that haven't been allowed, 
I think we need to have a discussion about that to decide whether we want to recommend changes to allow those uses in the zoning because, you know, it's been in place just a couple of years and I think we're learning about what's working and what's not working about it. So it might not be a big lift, it might just be, are there some uses that we want to add and what do we want to do about the self storage facilities? So leave it at that minimum, minimum local zone. You seem to be stuck on the self service. Uh, well, just just because I'm, I'm, not, think, I'm not saying it's bad or good, but yeah. but is is there more coming in, or is is there a desire not to have any more? Well, I, I actually have this a slightly different question. Um, are there instances where someone has approached the planning departments? and said, I'd like to use such and such in the industrial district, and we've said no. Yeah, we recently had Don't one right there. The the <laughs> <laughs> so again, I, I think it might be looking at how specific some of, you know, there are, how can we encourage more creative, I mean, the, the intent was to, to encourage creative use of that space for the benefit of the the town and that is certainly a creative use of the space for the benefit of the town and for the way that it's written it's we're not able to permit it so i think looking at the language in terms of and whether that means we address the self-storage or not but just how broadly can we help identify i'm okay with that uh, I'm that's just, how i would prefer to look at it personally. i'm just wondering why self-storage came so well, I can, well, partly because, can remember when it was permitted, it maxed out the floor area ratio that was allowed in its low value commercial. It doesn't really yield what the intention of the zoning was. So whereas you have like a class A office building that has a certain value, what, uh, just talking about the building itself, a storage unit doesn't have that. It doesn't come anywhere near it. And then if you're looking at jobs, you're looking at creativity if you're looking at a catalyst project it didn't do any of that if now we actually have more of a cluster of like storage units down there i mean and if we want doggy daycare i mean i thought that was supposed to be more like a creative hybrid of um like an innovation space that's how it was built i think to town meeting um versus you know, more neighborhood serving services, and that's fine. But I don't know if that was the intention. Yeah, I'm not sure I'm like pro or con on the doggy daycare there, right. but I think it's worth having the discussion about are there uses that, that would be appropriate there that right now we can't say yes to. Yeah, that I, I, that I don't know. I don't know what kind of interest we have in that area. Well, so so or, than, or if there's no doggy daycare left oh, oh, oh. else, maybe So I be. think rather than getting to the weeds on this one right now, <laughs> it sounds like a discussion would be warranted. So let's keep that one on our list. Thank and then you. what I would ask is that um, we work with Kelly and Claire and their team to identify what's been asked, what currently is allowed, and then we can have an informed discussion around what we may or may not. And again, these are things we're exploring. We're not committing that we are absolutely going to take these yep. to town meeting. So let's, at a future meeting, have a discussion about it with the information in front of us so we can have an informed discussion. Okay, so that one, we will move forward to a future meeting. Um, clarifications we identified, we'd move forward. And then the other recommendation was to um, look at some of these items in, or all of these in the in the business district. And again, the list I have is height minimums um, on Mass Ave, the consolidation of the Heights business districts, uh, open space requirements and uh, rear setbacks and step back requirements for uh, multiple frontages. And if you want to focus that as a test case in the heights, I'm okay with that too. I'm not just saying that, you know, but I like to leave it broad like that and then maybe bring it down later. Okay, I think that's I fair. That's, I think that's. Does anyone else have a concern? I, I just think we should look at it for the whole town. 
but we can decide that later. Start right. You gotta yeah. start right. Yeah. yeah, sure, yeah. it's fine. Yes. The, well, the 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 one one advantage with the heights is that there has already been a public process, um, and you know, there were some recommendations that came out of it. We don't necessarily have to go with those verbatim. We can, you know. Yeah, we could use them as there is something there to use right. as a starting point. Okay. So review okay. consolidating the business districts absolutely will be limited to the heights in terms of our review. And then I think in our next discussion the question is these other three items mm -hmm. um, yep. are those specific to all of the business districts or the business districts where they apply for design twenty by lot or just in the heights where we are consolidating. Well well if if we want to rely on reports, all three things are in the housing production plan and the master plan. Yes. So they're not limited to the heights. Right. And I, so right. And I would say again if we're going to apply these we should do it by district and those districts are found elsewhere in I'm off for that sounds okay. There's involvement from us. Okay. Of something coming at the end. Thing. Here. All right. Here we go. Uh, any anything else? Jean? Great job. I, I hate to say this, please I go for it. I, I don't think. Say your piece. That we have the bandwidth to do it. Okay. But we're not doing anything about affordable housing, and um, you know, the community specifically says. It can, housing so I don't know what we well, if we, we want to do something mm -hmm. what we want to do but I just feel like we're not doing anything about it. so it seems a little bit of a shame to me. so 40 R is under our MBTA communities list correct that's what we one of the strategies yeah. we've identified and so again if we to Melissa's point take a broader view, we meet the MBTA community's requirements, but then also take a broader view as to what else can we create as part okay, of that. So it may go beyond MBTA That's, that's what's on my list. Okay. So I have the 20% inclusionary as... requirements okay. specifically listed under that, even though it's okay. not part of that. As, as long piece. as we bookmark it as something that's going to be reviewed yes. through MBTA communities. Not yeah, that's on, part that's of on my list. Not simply as part of 40R. Correct. And I will add that in to make sure that that's clear. Thank you. Yep. Just uh, study inclu inclusionary yeah, I, I, zoning I, percentage with density bonuses, right? That was the, mm -hmm. the last one? Okay. Yeah. I will have that in my list. This can involve a change. This is oh. the now. Yeah, this yes, of course. Yeah. Okay. Then we can go back and figure out how we're going to do it. <laughs> okay. Where's that? Kelly? <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. So I think that is our path forward. Um, and that concludes agenda item number one. And we'll now move to agenda item number two, which is the Redevelopment Board 2023 schedule. And uh, Claire or Kelly, did you want to highlight anything specific within this? Sure. We're just looking for feedback. Do you want to? No, go ahead. Okay. okay. Um, I just, I basically pulled every first and third Monday of the month, with the exception of those that fall on a holiday, as noted in the section right. below. Um, I, you know, I have a meeting on every Monday in March, just because that's been how it's turned out in the past couple of years. Obviously, that's going to depend on the number of zoning amendments and citizen petitions per file for town meeting. Um, I think it was Mondays and Wednesdays in March this past year. It got year. worse, didn't it? It got yes. worse. Yeah. Uh, I lived on Zoom, so well, in uh, Arlington, oh, Claire. <laughs> so, so this is just a beginning. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So, like, what what ideally we would love to do is to be able to confirm the schedule through the summer, or like. And, yes. and I, I, we, it could change if the board decides that you want to take a July break instead of an August, August break like we did this year. Um, but what would be great is 
uh, working with our office manager, Mary Wazinski, to determine an overall schedule of when hearing materials need to be submitted, when the advertising dates are, just so that it's very clear to the public sure. and applicants as well. Um, the sooner we can have the schedule nailed down, the, the sooner we can get that published with our application. That sounds good. The only question I had, and then we'll see other questions that we have. I'm assuming that the three meetings in May, the May 22nd meeting is just so that, again, cross our fingers that town meeting is done by, by then that we get a meeting in in May in case it is protracted for multiple weeks. Yeah, I think this was kind of modeled after last year's schedule as well, where we yep. had to do a number of one hour meetings. Right. Because they were right before right. town meeting began. Okay. Um, yeah, let's cross our fingers that town meeting is done by May 22. But it's less than four weeks. Yeah, and it'll be in person. Because Cross our past, fingers for that too. In the past, it worked fine where we had a meeting and then we just walked over. Yeah. <laughs> As opposed to you know doing a Zoom and then. You know. Yeah. This is good because it allows us to set the other meetings uh, mm -hmm. on other boards so we coordinate uh, one like the CPA stuff we started right now. And, so <laughs> my my thought was, um, for May we might just want to add an asterisk noting that those are um, subject to the town meeting schedule because I sure. don't know that again if town meeting you know is complete by May fifteenth that we need to have an, another meeting on the twenty second as well. And, and we and we don't know how many special permits and where, but do we want to designate which March meetings are the ones that we have special permit hearings, or do we want to leave that open for now? Um, I think in the past we've left it open because we okay. may end up having, what What I know we tried to do in the past is if we do have a special permit hearing, we tried to limit that to one um, nights a week because it all has to be advertised in advance. Right. So okay. it would end up being at the end of the meeting and we just tried to limit the number of hearings that you have on top of Yes. Um, any other comments or questions on the schedule? Thanks no? for the schedule. Thank you for putting <laughs> that together. That looks good. Do we need to move acceptance or adoption? Okay, do we need to prove this? I think we've done Let's that go ahead and do that. I don't know that we do, but we might as well. Uh, is there a motion to approve the January through July 2023 meeting schedule as uh, submitted? So moved. Is there a second? We'll take a vote. Kim? Yes. Jean? Yes. Melissa? Yes. Steve? Yes. And I have a yes as well. That is approved. Thank you very much. And that closes agenda item number two. We will now move to agenda item number three, which is open forum. I'll invite um, any member of the public who's joining us this evening to raise your hand if you'd like to speak. Uh, you'll have up to uh, three minutes to address the board, and I ask that you introduce yourself by your first, last name, and address. Please <coughs> go uh, ahead. Uh, John Worden, uh, uh, town meeting member, precinct gate, with Jason Street. Uh, I want to uh, Thank the board for having a real meeting instead of a Zoom meeting. I'm among those who are really sick of Zoom meetings. <laughs> and uh, so it's nice to see people in a real session. Uh, however, uh, I have to note that the, the unamplified voices of the board members in this spacious hall have made the, at least speak to 50% of the audience, we did not have the wisdom of much of what you had to say. Mr. Lau. Um, anyway, uh, I looked over this uh, list uh, that's attached to your agenda uh, of uh, several, six pages of uh, stuff that was uh, found, uh, located from one or another public documents. And uh, I think 52 years of looking at zoning, I've never seen so many bad ideas on a single page, single document. Um, however, so I want to give you. Um, a, a few ideas for some things that you should consider, but not in this case. Uh, one, uh, uh, one, one would be uh, looking at 40B uh, 
to establish, as Winchester did, an institutional zone in which he would put uh, cemeteries, playgrounds, town hall, fire station, police station, uh, libraries, churches, and so on, uh, in, in its own, and take it out of our one, uh, so that uh, the 1.5% of, of, of residentially zoned property uh, in the town would be easily met. And uh, those, those properties have been in our one just because nobody ever, when they did that, they never thought such an evil thing as 40B would come along. That, that's something that really should be looked at. Winchester did it, but, and you can look at their bylaws and see the details. Uh, the other uh, next thing I would suggest is that um, um, the, uh, uh, the, the, in my opinion, there's not really a housing shortage. There's a shortage of housing that people can afford. And there are a lot of houses in this town, and I'm sure other towns in the area, uh, post-war small houses, some in pre-war, um, that, could, that could go to family, starting families, or older people who want to uh, move in from their large house to a new house. And, um, uh, but they, they never get to, on the market. They're gobbled up by developers to tear them down and put up a big mansion or a two-family zone, a, a, a oversized townhouse. And the, I, I suggest that you look at the type of zoning, using FAR or setback rules or whatever, open space requirements, to try to preserve those houses for the people who need them. The developers don't need to make any more money by building mansions for, for computer materials that come from Cambridge that would drag some money. They need it for the ordinary people who always here for have been able to live in the house. Uh, we are over time. If you have another point um, you, you'd like to make, we'll certainly take that. But really? we're, we're over time. Uh, okay, well, uh, let, let me just to wrap up. I, I really have more, more, more to say than that. Um, and you're more than we'd love if you would like mm -hmm. to if you'd like to submit anything in, in writing. We'd be more than happy to review that as well. Oh, okay. Well, let, let, let me just say uh, let, let me say two two more sentences, if I may, Madam Chair. Please. Uh, one, I think mixed use you should require at least twenty percent to be commercial, uh, uh, non-residential. Uh, so that it's not just an excuse to build a big apartment building with a token shop in the corner. The other, the other thing is on the MBTA community. We, I think, we, we have the obligation uh, not to sell our neighbors in East Darlington down the down the river uh, in order to satisfy the whims of whoever put that stupid legislation in. And I have a plan that I think will deal with that without sticking it to our friends in, in East Darlington. Thank you. Thank you very much. Please. Thank you, Madam Chair. I, I'm Carl Wagner. I live in Precinct 15 on, on Edge Hill Road. Um, I wanted to say it, it's so important that ACMI is here today, and I, I, I've heard you say that within a month or two, you will be getting the hybrid meetings going again, because we have four members of the public, as far as I can tell here. And what you're talking about is very important. I'd also like to say it's great to see the new director planning. Thank you and welcome to the, to the town. and. Uh, and thank you to the volunteers of the board for being here. Um, I think it's very important that the audio comment that, uh, that Mr. Warden made is adhered to it and improved it. I'm sitting in the front row, actually it's the end row also, the only row here tonight, and I'm 50, and I couldn't hear any except the best, strongest voice uh, right here. Uh, the rest of you have great voices, but it's hard to hear you, and it, the, the sound is not, not adequate. Noted. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I wanted to point out that the MBTA density is already achieved in Arlington. You probably all know this. I don't know if people watching you know that 15 units per acre is already achieved. And it's really it's so frustrating that we in Massachusetts could not fix the MBTA overlay to acknowledge what Arlington has already done as its share in, in building good density. So I hope that we consider do we need this mass housing money? Or can we fight as, as, a, as a group of communities in New England, in Massachusetts, to acknowledge that Arlington's already in the dense bucket? Uh, I'd like to point out that on that on that packet of six pages that Mr. Warden referred to, yes, there are some very admirable 
things that, that might help our climate resiliency and might help our affordability. But as he said, there are some detestable options in there. Do people realize that making single family housing might become potentially something you have to get a special permit for? Or that making a building more, uh, a building with only one floor might be illegal? Property owners and renters and users of Arlington, they are the ones who we all live and work with. And I think that the town manager, and by extension, the director of planning, work for the people who rent and own here, whether they are business owners or whether they are residences. And all of us volunteers who come to these meetings or are, are present in, in the commissions, we have to recognize that we don't work for Metro Boston organizations like MAPC. We don't work for developers who aren't here yet. We work for the people who live and work in the town already. And as far as the housing crisis, which we know there is a housing crisis, it's not a quantity crisis, it's an affordability crisis. There is so much housing, but it's not in Arlington. Other places are cheaper. Arlington is the second most dense town in Arlington, in, in, in Massachusetts. We need to look at affordability, climate resiliency, equity and inclusion, and diversity of people and homes and building structures. We really have to work, as, as Mr. Warden said, not to sell people down the river like East Arlington, people who are living in two families there, suddenly looking at their neighborhoods destroyed by huge multi-family units that, that don't really have any rules on them. We have to look at the people right who live in single families to say, oh, you live in a single family, that's okay too. You're right at time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. There are only four of us, but I think a three-minute limit seems, you know, whatever. Here you go. Um, Kelly, would you just like to um, to clarify for our um, folks who are joining us through ACMI whether Arlington does or does not meet the density requirements currently? Sure. So we actually haven't done that calculation to understand density yet, but what we do know is that we don't allow three families by right, which is a key component of MBTA community. So we have to allow at least zone, we have to have a zoning district of reasonable size. It's gonna be at least 32 acres. It doesn't have to be connected to Alewife or in East Arlington. It could be anywhere in Arlington because of um, the, the revised DHC guidelines. And that district does have to allow at least three families by right. So we don't have any districts that allow three families by right at all. Appreciate the clarification. Um, any other members of the public who have not spoken who would like to speak this evening? Okay, uh, with that we will close open forum and move to our next agenda item, which is new business. Is there any new business? I have um, two, uh, two announcements, one announcement, one update. So this board um, at one point had said that a goal for this year would be um, to look at commercial design guidelines hire potentially a consultant um, who could help us uh, put together design guidelines, much like we do the residential design guidelines. I am currently reviewing a draft RFQ um, for that consultant, so we are moving ahead with that. Um, and I have that draft to share with you, certainly by our next meeting and probably before. Um, and the other announcement that I have is that our senior transportation planner, Dan Amstutz, is leaving us oh. for VHB. Um, yeah, never <laughs> <laughs> we just have to just stand So we will be hiring a, a uh, transportation planner um, ASAP. In fact, I said, please make your announcements to everyone you can because we're going to try to get this element as soon as possible. Obviously, we will very, very much miss Dan. He's been great. We um, will miss him. He has yeah, been a he's wonderful been asset to the, to the team. Yeah. So. so we're down another... Um, you know, senior planner, someone at that at that level. I will say that I have received um, to date seven applications for the economic development board position. And Kelly and I will be resuming. It's number one on my list at the moment. Um, we'll, be, we'll be looking through those. We have some really great candidates. Fantastic. I'm pretty great. excited. Okay. So, can I ask, can I ask how long Dan is with us through? Dan, um, he will. His last date is the eighth. Okay, I believe. But he is going to. Uh, his, his last day in the office um, is the November that's going to be the one Okay. So. Any questions for Claire about the personnel announcements? Uh, Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm just curious, is there, I mean, with the HBA, do you know 
I mean, because I've heard in general, you know, municipalities having more trouble keeping talent, and I don't know if so, there was any kind of indication. That's interesting. Know. I asked. I actually asked him about that. I said, you know, could you give me? An, would you give me an opportunity to match? I'm not even sure if that's right. my budget. I don't know. Um, and he said, well, you know, what I heard was, I also don't think we could match what the offer is. All of the consultancies are stacking up because there will be very, very soon quite a bit of infrastructure funding coming. And all that's going to happen is municipalities will be awarded, and the first thing we're going to do is hire an engineering consultant. So those shops are really, really, um, they're stacking up, and they're stealing. <laughs> I was just wondering if it was a remote work or any other kind of perk thing that, you know, not, not about. really. In fact, he told me he's going to stay in the area for a little while. His job is actually, this one's based in Western Connecticut, so they will eventually have to make a move, but yeah. Thanks. Sure. Thank you for the update. Uh, any other new business, please? Is it loud? <laughs> Project. They could have said something. <laughs> we'll, we'll work on that in the future. That is noted, and it was good feedback, and we'll take so that. This thing. Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. Any heads up of any potential projects, especially for every time we up this uh, this winter? Let's let's leave it this winter that that you know that we sort of been thinking of or something like that. I just. Um, I, you know, I always get nervous when there's meeting after meeting and there's no special project. We're not going anywhere. Um, so, so 80 Broadway has been rescheduled to yes. November 7. Um, we have a number of signs that are coming up. And I know that's not the kind of project you're probably asking about. Um, and then it does seem like 645 Mass Ave will be coming back. Um, the, the not your average shows. Um, so that will be a project that is uh, that, that will be coming back probably this fall. That's as far as I know so far. Um, there's a couple of other like you know I hear from various attorneys and whatnot, and I, I just they haven't materialized into real application yet. So I'm just kind of waiting. Yeah, I'm just curious, but because of the some of the zoning changes we, we've done, are they still waiting for that to go official? Like some parking uh, reductions and. Increase. Uh, well, they were just the new ones were just posted today. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, and, and that is as applicants have been, as people have been contacting our department, have been alerting them to the fact that those zoning changes are coming, and now that they're posted, they're they're retroactive to the date of town meeting, so they're actually in effect as of April. Um, so. And I haven't heard anything about the industrial districts. The doggy daycare was just a, a, a use that wanted to go into an existing building. So, just want to hear if any of our changes make any of the fact or anything. I just to understand that. Yeah. Thank you. So, I, I just wanted to mention that in the spring, I think, the MBTA started a quality together bus project. And which I felt was terrible for Arlington, and I don't know that the select board commented on it. I did go, they didn't. I went to some of the meetings, and other boards and other elected officials from other communities weighed in on what they felt the negative aspects for their communities. And I don't know if anybody other than me weighed in on what I felt was negative. Um, and for those of you who don't know, the number 67 bus would be eliminated at that goes from Sims through Arlington Broadway, right? Center. Right. Sims through Arlington Center, down Pleasant Street, and to um, Elworth. So it would eliminate one of the major bus routes to and from Elworth that picked up a lot of people along that route. Somebody, not me, actually posted signs along Pleasant Street that said, do something about this, they're going to take away our bus. And I often used to take the bus, so I knew a lot of people took it. Um, it also would end the 84 bus that goes from Elif to Arlington Heights. It would reduce the frequency 
of the 78 bus that goes from Arlington Heights to Harvard Square from once every approximately 20 minutes to a half hour to once every hour. It would create a 54 bus that goes from Arlington Center to Waltham, but not to any of the employment areas in Waltham, not to 128 and not to Brandeis, but through Belmont and the circuitous route that I don't think anybody would take. Well, there are lots of comments. The T's having a public Zoom meeting on November 2nd, I think, about it, and they're coming out with their new revised Better Bus plan, they said before that. So people might want to take a look at it. And also they propose to eliminate the 79 bus, which they haven't done in a long time. This has all concerned me because one of the things that we've said is Arlington has good public transportation because there's a lot of ways to get to Elwife and you know, and ways to get to Davis Square and Porter Square. And they're eliminating a significant number of those public transportation routes. So I think we should pay attention and maybe at the next meeting when we see what it is, if there's time to comment, we might want to work with the staff on, on commenting. Um, so I thought it was a shame that the town didn't do it. Sure. Okay. Thank you, Jean. I appreciate you bringing that to our attention. It's helpful. Any other new business? I'll just note that um, at our, as I mentioned during the question, um, at our next meeting, there is a series of decision points that's been created by the remote participation study group that we will need to um, discuss amongst ourselves and come with come up with a plan so that we can begin hybrid meetings as part of the, the pilot program. So that's something that we can discuss Seven. I can just add that um, Jim, Jim Feeney has trained me on how to use the knee board, so we're pretty much set up to go just once we get the protocol in place. Great. It's going to be in this room? That's that's the plan. So we can talk about that as well as any implementation that we um, sound, sound um, might yeah, want to. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's, yeah, maybe it's testing and balancing with that what we're, yeah. yeah. Well, maybe we had to select board set up with everybody had to do a little microphone in front of them and you know, that was quite the I mean we can convince them to start meeting on Wednesday so that we can get their chambers on that's for another time any other new business <laughs> <laughs> all right um is there a motion to adjourn so motion I'll second we'll take a vote Ken yes Jean yes Melissa yes Steve yes and I'm a yes as well this meeting is adjourned thank you